two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured piteous overthrows do with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage the which if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. being moved. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog of the house of Montague moves me. To move is to stir, and to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runst away. A dog of that house shall move me to stand. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montague's. They chose thee a weak slave, for the weakest goes to the wall. <laughs> Tis true. And therefore women, being the weaker vessels, are ever thrust to the wall. Here come to of the house of one ill. Quarrel, quarrel, I will back thee. Now, oh, turn thy back and run. I will bite my thumb at them, which is disgrace to them, if they bear it. Everything is Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Come, come, come. <laughs> <laughs> The captain of the Montague. The seven of the captain came over there. And the seven of the Montague from over there. Yes. And then when they met, the captain of the Montague, I found my thumb at you. I said, what? Did you believe? Oh, they're straight out. 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 Oh,
thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio. Look upon thy death. A servant of the Capulets has killed Abraham. Abraham has been killed on the piazza by a Capulet. What happened? What happened? What happened? Abraham has been killed. What happened? What's this? Abraham! Abraham! Oh, where's my man? Where's my man? Oh, traitor! Murder. What noise is this? Oh, 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 oh. Abraham is dead. Staining steel. Will they not hear? What all you men, you beasts that quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins? Three civil brawls bred of an airy word by thee, old Capulet and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. On pain of torture from those bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. Cousin, is the day so young? But you struck nine. Ah, me. Sad hours seem long. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favor. Where I am in love. Alas, that love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Alas, that love whose view is muffled still should without eyes see pathways to his will. Why then, oh brawling love, oh loving hate, oh anything of nothing first create, oh heavy lightness, serious vanity. Dost thou not laugh? No cause. I rather weep. Good heart at what? Thy good heart's oppression. Why, such is love's transgression. This love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Farewell, my cousin. Soft, I will go along. And if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Tut. I have lost myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo. He is some other way. Tell me, in sadness, who is that you love? Bid a sick man in sadness make his will. Ah, word he'll urge to one that is so ill. <laughs> <laughs> Quick! <laughs> 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 
must talk in secret. Nurse, come back again. I have remembered me thou shalt hear our counsel. <laughs> thou knowst my daughter's of a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. How long is it now to Lammas time? Even or odd. Of all days of the year, come Lammas Eve at night, shall she be fourteen. Susan and she... God rest all Christian souls, were of an age. Well, Susan is with God. She was too good for me. But, as I said, on Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. That shall she marry. I remember it well. It is since the earthquake now, eleven years, and she was weaned. <laughs> I never shall forget it. For then she could stand high alone. Nay, by the rule, she could have run, waddled all about. For even the day before, she broke her brow. <laughs> and then my husband, God be with his soul, was a merry man, took up the child, yea, quoth thee, dost thou fall upon my face? Thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit. Wilt thou not, Julie? <laughs> and by the holiday of the pretty wretch left crying and said, I, <laughs> I warrant that I should live a thousand years. I would have repented. Wilt thou not, Julie? Quoth he. <laughs> and pretty fool it stinted and said, I. <laughs> and stint thou too, I pray thee, nurse. Say, I. Peace. I have done. God mark thee to his grace. And I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. <laughs> Mary, that Mary is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? To marry? Mm -hmm. It is an honor that I dream not of. An honor? <laughs> Were not I thine only nurse? I'd say thou had sucked wisdom from thy teeth. <laughs> an honor? Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you here in Verona, Ladies of esteem are made already mothers. Thus then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. But saying o'er what I have said before, my child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers with her in their pride, ere we may think her right to be a bride. Younger than she, our happy mother's maid. And too soon marred of those so early made. The earth has swallowed all my hopes, but she. But woo her, gentle Paris. Get her heart. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, where too I have invited many a guest such as I love. And you among the store, one more most welcome makes my number more. But my will to her consent is but a part. Madam, do it. Come quickly, you can see them. What say? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read all the volume of young Paddy's face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. I look to like 
if looking liking move. But no more deep will I endart mine eye than your consent gives strength to make it fly. Oh. To the feast of Capulet goes the fair Rosalind, whom he so loves. I aimed so near when I supposed you loved. A right fair mark, fair cuz, is soonest. Hit! Ah. <laughs> look, look, Esther, here comes Lady Martino. Good evening, my lord. <laughs> Well, in that hit, you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit, and in strong proof of chastity well armed. From love's weak childish bow she lives unharmed. She will not stay the siege of loving terms, nor bide the encounter of assailing eyes. Oh, she is rich in beauty. Only poor that when she dies, with beauty dies her store. She is too fair, too wise, wisely too fair to merit bliss by making me despair. She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead, that live to till it now. Tut, man. One fire burns out another's burning. One pain is lessened by another's anguish. Turn giddy and be helped by backward turning. <laughs> One desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to thy eye. And the rank poison of the old will die. Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Oh. Teach me how I should forget to think. Examine other beauties. Farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. One fairer than my love. The all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. <laughs> Young one did you? Get real now.
Welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies that have their toes unplayed with corns will have a bout with you. Now, how, my mistresses? Which of you all will now deny to dance? <laughs> More like two names! Room has grown too hot, Mr. Henley. Ah, sitter, this unlooked for sport comes well. <laughs> oh, come, hall, hall. Give room and put it, girls. <laughs> Oh. Young Romeo's here. Romeo? Yes, sir. this night. My fair ladies, my noble lords, now the musicians of St. Jerome will play for you the beautiful galliard, Iovini in Calviso Primavera. And that? Uh... Young Romeo, is it? It is he, that villain Romeo. Come here in my house during this punishment. Therefore, be patient. Take no note of him. <laughs> I'll not he endure him. He shall be endured. <laughs> you must contrary me. Marriage is time. <laughs> oh, I have seen the day that I have worn a visor. <laughs> I could. Uh, Tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear. For shame, I'll make you quiet. Oh, what, what chill in my heart? You're a brink of go. <laughs>
Wine here. My fair ladies, my noble lords. In your carriage. Thank you. Now we'll play the Ballad of the Marsh by Signor Guillaume Machine. The ballad will be danced with masks. Your lead? Signor Paris. my unworthiest hand this holy shrine the gentle fine is this my lips two blushing pilgrims ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss good pilgrim you do wrong your hands too much which manly devotion shows in this for saints have hands that Pilgrim's hands to touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips, and holy palmer's too? I, Pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou. Lest faith turn to despair. Madam, your mother craves a word. Oh! What is her mother? Mary Bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house. Is she a Capulet? Good night, my love. Go, ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love, sprung from my only hate. My life is my foe's debt. Can I go forward when my heart is here? Why, where the devil should this Romeo be? Hey, Romeo! Romeo! Hey, a half hearted wench that Rosaline torments him so that he would sure run. Romeo! My cousin Romeo! Romeo! Oh, he's gone! He's mad. He is wise. <laughs> and upon my life had stolen him home to bed. Call! 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 Call, good Mercutio! Call! 
<laughs> Nay, a conjure, too. Oh. Oh. Romeo, humors, madman, passion, lover. Oh. <laughs> Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. <laughs> Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. Ah. Uh, no. <laughs> hey, 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 let's go to him. Come. <laughs> <laughs> I conjure thee by Rosalind's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lips, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh, and the domains that there adjacent lie. <laughs> and if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. This cannot anger him. My invocation is fair and honest. In his mistress' name, I conjure only but to raise up him. Oh. <laughs> Come, shall we go? Let's go. <laughs> no, then, for it is but vain to seek him here. That means not to be found. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. <laughs> I conjure thee, my providence, my wife. He jests at scars that never felt a wound. What light through yonder window breaks? I me, be the sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a captive. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, thou art not a Montague. What's Montague? It is no hand, no foot, no arm, no face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Oh, Romeo, doff thy name. And for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. What man art thou? By a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of this town's utterance. Yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo? And a Montague? Neither, fair maid, if either thee dislike. How oh, came thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb. With love's light wings did I o'er perch these walls. For stony limits cannot hold love out. Therefore thy kinsmen are no stop to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. I have night's cloak to hide me from their eyes. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate 
and death prorogate wanting of thy love. By whose direction foundst thou out this place? By love. At first it prompted me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him eyes. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say, I, and I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. O gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond Therefore thou mayst think my havior light. But trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. Do not impute this yielding to light love, which the dark night hath so discovered. Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I swear that tips with silver all these fruit tree Oh, swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb, lest the, thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? <laughs> Do not swear at all. Or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, and I'll believe thee. Sweet, good night. This bud of love, by summer's ripening breath, may prove a beauteous flower. When next we meet. Good night, good night. A sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. I hear the noise within. Dear love, adieu. Julia, and on, good nurse. Sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little. I will come again. Oh, blessed. Blessed night. I am afeard being in night, all this is but a dream, too flattering, sweet to be substantial. Oh. oh. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose marriage, send me word tomorrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform the rite. All my fortunes at thy foot I lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. So thrive, my soul. A thousand times. Good night. A thousand times the worse to what thy life. Falconer's voice to lure this tassel gentle back again. Romeo! Romeo! My dear! Romeo! My dear! I have forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here till thou remember. I shall forget to have thee still stand there. And I'll still stay to have thee still forget. <laughs> <laughs> Shh! <laughs> oh! It is almost morning. I would have thee God, and yet no farther than a wanton's bird, who lets it hop a little from her hand, like a poor prisoner in his twisted jives, and with a silk thread plucks it back again, so loving, jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. Sweet, so would I. Yet I would kill thee with much cherishing. Good night. Good night. Oh. Parting is such sweet sorrow. 
that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Good night. Gray-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light. Now, ere the sun advances burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry, I must not fill this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juiced flowers. The earth, that's nature's mother, is her tomb. What is her burying grave? That is her womb. And from her womb, children of divers kind, we sucking in a natural bosom find. Oh, mickle is the powerful grace that lies in plants, herbs, stones, and their true qualities. Within the infant rind of this weak flower. Within the infant rind of this. Oh, within the infant rind of this weak flower, poison hath residence and medicine power. For this being smelt with that part cheers each part. Being tasted, slays all senses with the heart. Oh. Gives a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. But care keeps his watch in every old man's eye, and where care lodges, sleep will never lie. But where unbruised youth with unstuck brain doth couch his limbs, there golden sleep doth reign. Therefore, thy earliness doth me assure, thou art aroused by some distemperature. <laughs> Or if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. That last is true. The sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin. Wast thou with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my ghostly father? <laughs> no, I have forgot that name and that name's woe. Well. That's my good son. But where hast thou been then? Where? 
on a sudden, one hath wounded me that's by me wounded. Both are remedies within thy help and holy physic lies. I bear no hatred, blessed man. For lo, my intercession likewise steads my foe. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Then plainly. No, my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine. And all combined, save what thou must combine by holy marriage. Now, but this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy St. Francis, what a change is here. Is Rosaline, whom thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Jesu Maria, what a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. And thou art changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall when there's no strength in men. Thou chidst me oft for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. And that's me very love. Not in a grave, to lay one in, another out to her. I pray thee, chide not. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love alike. The other did not so. In one respect, I'll thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. send the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. But John, she cannot meet him. Oh, that's not so. Oh. Love's herald should be thoughts which ten times faster glide than the sun's beams. Jaunt of Nay, come, I pray thee, speak, good goodness, speak. <clears throat> Jesus, what haste? Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? Uh. <laughs> Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either and I'll stay in the circumstance. Let me be satisfied. Is good or bad? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and, I warrant, a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou replies, your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady, dear, are you so hot? Mary, come up, I trow. Henceforward, do your messages yourself. Oh, here's such a coil. No. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to church tomorrow? I have. For naught 
so vile that on the earth doth live, but to the earth some special good doth give. Nor aught so good, but strained from that fair use, revolts from true birth, stumbling on abuse. Virtue itself turns vice being misapplied. Two such opposed foes encamp them still in man, as well as herbs, grace, and rude will. And where the worser is predominant, it is she. And where the worser is predominant, oh, let us go, Father. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that plant. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. smile the heavens upon this holy act, that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death, do what he dare. Ego coniungo vos in matrimonium, in nomine patris, et fili, et spiritus sancti. Amen.
Romeo! Love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me. Therefore turn and go. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason of my love. And so, good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. Oh, calm, dishonor of vile submission. Alastor Carter carries it away. Tybalt, you rat catcher. Will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me? Good king of cats. Mercutio. Good king of cats. Nothing but one of your nine lives that I mean to make bold with all. And as you shall use me hereafter, try beat the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your sword? Out to his pilcher by the ears. Make haste, lest mine be about your ears ere it be out. Here for you, gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier up. Come, sir, your passado. Draw it, Romeo. Be down their weapons. <laughs> Gentlemen, for shame. The prince expressly hath forbid this bandy in her own streets. Ho, Tybalt, good Mercutio. <laughs> Good Mercutio. Oh, why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. Uh, courage, man. The hurt cannot be much. Oh, oh no. It is not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door. It is enough to serve. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave, man. I'm peppered, I warrant, for this world. A plague on both your houses. Romeo, Romeo, brave Mercutio's dead. Away to heaven, respective lenity, and fire and fury be my conduct now. Either thou or I or both must go with him. Oh, wretched boy that didst consort him here shalt will him. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Where are the vile beginners? 
murderers of this fray. I can discover all. Three hours' wife have mangled it. But wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? Romeo, that spoke him fair, bade him think how nice the quarrel was, and urged with all your high displeasure. All this uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, would not take truce of the unruly spleen of Tybalt death to peace, but that he tilts with piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast, who, all as hot, turns deadly point to point. Romeo, he cries aloud, hold friends, friends, part! And swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their fatal points and twixt them rushes. Underneath whose arm, an envious thrust from Tybalt hit the life of stout Mercutio. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in this black strife. And all those twenty could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio. Who then the price of his dear blood doth owe? Not Romeo, prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end. The life of Tybalt. Mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill.
prince. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Banishment? Banishment. Oh, banishment. Be merciful, say death. For exile hath more terror in his look, much more than death. <laughs> Do not say banishment. <laughs> Hence from Verona art thou banishment. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. Heaven is here, where Juliet lives. And every cat and dog and little mouse, every unworthy thing live here in heaven and may look on her. But Romeo may not. He is banished. Hast thou no poison mixed, no sharp round knife, no sudden mean of death, though near so mean, but banish it to kill me. Banish it. Hear me, but speak a word. Thou canst not speak of that, thou dost not feel. Wert thou as young as I, Juliet, my love, and I but married, tybalt murderer, doting like me, and like me, banish it. Then mightst thou speak. Holy Friar, where is my lady's lord? Where's Romeo? There on the ground, with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he is even in my mistress's case. Just in her case. Speaks thou of Juliet. How is it with her? Does she not think me an old murderer? Now I have stained the childhood of her joy with blood removed, but little from her own. Where is she? And how does she? And what says my consul lady to our cancelled love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps. And now falls on her bed, and then starts up, and Tybalt calls. And then on Romeo cries, and then down falls again. <laughs> Stand up. Stand up, stand, and you be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you fall into so deep an oath? Art thou a man? Thy form cries out thou art. Thy tears are woman. <laughs> Go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed. But look, thou stay not till the watch be set. For then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live, till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou wentst forth in lamentation. Make haste. 
Balthazar. Thank you, my lord. Romeo! your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe which you mistaking offer up to joy. My husband lives that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband. All this is comfort, wherefore we by this. <laughs> Fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn. Night's candles are burnt out. And jock and day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops. I must be gone and live or stay and die. Your light is not daylight. I know it. I therefore stay yet. Thou needst not to be gone. Let me stay here. Let me be ta'en and die. I am content that thou would have it so. I'll say yon grey is not the morning's eye. Tis but the pale reflex of Cynthia's brow. No, that is not the lark whose notes to beat the vaulty heaven so high above our heads. I have more care to stay than will to go. No. Come, death, and welcome. Oh, no. Juliet wills it so. How now, my soul? No. Let's talk. It is not day. It is. It is. Be gone. I am away. It is the lark that sings so out of tune, straining harsh discords and unpleasing shouts. All oh, now be gone, more light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark our world. <laughs> Nurse, the day is broke. Beware, look about. Oh. 
in and let life out. I must hear from thee every day in the hour, for in a minute there are many days. I will omit no opportunity. Oh, thinks thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not, and all our woe shall serve for sweet discourses in our time to come. me love in my eyes, so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Adieu, adieu. <laughs> it is late, my lord. Things have fallen out, sir, so unluckily, that we have had no time to move our daughter. Look you, she loved her kinsman Tibble dearly, and so did I. Well, we were born to die. These times of woe afford no time to woo. South. What day is this? Monday, my lord. Monday? Uh-huh. Well, Wednesday's too soon. A Thursday, let it be. A Thursday tell her she shall be married to this noble earl. Will you be ready? Do you like this haste? We'll keep no greater do a friend or two. For hark you, Tibble being slain so late, it may be thought we held him carelessly, being our kinsman, if we revel much. Therefore, we'll have some half a dozen friends, and there an end. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Signor Paris. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me. Nay, more. I doubt it not. Why, how now, Juliet? Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. Yet let me weep. For such a feeling law. Well, girl, thou weeps not so much for his death as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. What villain, madam? That same villain, Romeo. God pardon him. I do, with all my heart. And yet no man like he doth grieve my heart. Oh, how my heart abhors to hear him named and cannot come to him to wreak the love I bore my cousin Tybalt upon his body that hath slaughtered him. We will have vengeance for it, fear thou not. Then weep no more. But now I tell thee joyful tidings, girl. And joy comes well in such a needful time. What are they, I beseech your ladyship? Well, well, thou hast a careful father, child. One who, to put thee from thy heaviness, hath sorted out a sudden day of joy that thou expects not, nor I look not for. Madam, in happy time, what day is that? Mary, my child, early next Thursday morn, the gallant, rich, and noble gentleman, the County Paris, at St. Peter's Church, 
shall happily make thee their joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed ere he that should be husband comes to woo. I pray you, tell my lord and father, madam, I will not marry yet, and when I do, I swear it shall be Romeo, whom you know I hate, rather than Paris. Tell him so yourself. And see how he will take it at your hands. Do as you will, for I have done with her. How now, wife? Have you not told her our decree? I, sir, but she were none. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to a grave. Soft, take me with you. Take me with you, wife. How? Will she none? Doth she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Doth she not count her blessed? Unworthy as she is, that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? Not proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but thankful even for hate that is meant love. How now, how now? Chump logic? What is this? Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not, and yet not proud? <laughs> Mistress Minion, you thank me no thankings, nor proud me no prouds. But fettle your fine joints on Thursday next to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee on the hurdle thither, you dallow face! Fie, fie! What, are you mad? Good father, I beseech you, on my knees, hear me with patience, but to speak a word. Hang thee, young baggage, disobedient wretch! I tell thee what. Get thee to church on Thursday, or never after look me in the face. Speak out! Reply out! Don't answer me! My fingers itch! Wife, we scarce thought us blessed that God had lent us but this only child. But now I see this one is one too much. And that we have a cross in having her. Out on her, Hilding! Oh. Oh, God in heaven, bless her. You are to blame, my lord, to rate her so. And why, my lady wisdom? Hold your tongue. Good prudence, matter with your gossip. Go! I speak no treason. No! Oh, God, ye God. May not one speak? Go. Go. You are too hard. God's bread! Makes me mad! Day, night, late, early, at home, abroad, alone in company, waking and sleeping, still my care hath been to have her matched. And having now provided a gentleman of princely parentage, a fair domains, and rich and nobly trained, stuffed, as they say, with honorable parts, proportioned as one's thought would wish a man, and then to have a wretched, dueling fool, a whining mallet in her fortune's tender, to answer, I am not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you, pardon me. But, and you are not wed, I am pardon you. Look to it, think of, I do not use the chest. Thursday is near, they hang on heart, a night. Oh, sweet my mother, cast me not away. Delay this marriage for a month, a week. Talk not to me, for I'll not speak a word. Oh, no. How shall this be prevented? My husband is on earth. My faith in heaven. Alack, alack, that heaven should practice stratagem upon so soft a subject as myself. What sayest thou? Hast thou not a word of joy, some comfort, nurse? Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished, and all the world do nothing that he dares ne'er come back to challenge you. Or if he do, it needs must be by stealth. Then, 
since the case so stands as now it does, I think it best you married with the county. Speaks thou this from thy heart? And from my soul, too. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a dish count to him. An eager madam had not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris had. Bishrew my very heart. I think you are happy in the second match, for it excels your first. Well, thou hast comforted me marvelous much. Good father, pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward, I am ever ruled by you. But now let me go, having displeased you, to Lawrence's cell, to make confession and to be absolved. This is wisely done. Omnia munda mundi. Oh, shut the door. And when thou hast done so, come weep with me. Past hope, past cure, past help. Omnia munda mundi. God joined my heart and Romeo's. Thou art him. And at this hand by thee to Romeo's seal shall be a label to another deed. Oh, my true heart with treacherous revolt turned to another. This shall slay them both. I do spy a kind of hope which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate which we would prevent. If Rather than to marry County Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from all the battlements of yonder tower. Or oh, walk in thievish ways, or bid me lurk where serpents are. Chain me with roaring bears, or shut me nightly in a charnel house. Hold then. Tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not the nurse lie in thy chamber. Take thou this phial, being then in bed, and this distilled liquor drink thou off, when presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humour, for no pulse shall keep his native progress but surcease. No warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. Each part deprived of supple government shall, stiff and stark and cold, appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours. 
Now, when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou, dead. Then, as the manner of our country is, in thy best robes, uncovered on the bier, thou shalt be borne to that same ancient fort where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. Things that to hear them told have made me tremble. I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. In the meantime, against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo, by my letter, know our drift. Then I will watch thy waking and secretly hither bring thee to this cell until the chapter day, which we in Mantua each year do hold at Easter time. With all the friars confused, our habits wearing, I'll bear thee hence to Romeo. But tell me, wilt thou not fear thy newly entombed cousin Tybalt? Give me, give me, oh, tell me not of fear. Love, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. She comes from Shrift with merry look. Come, go, go in. How now, my head song? Where have you been gadding? Where I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your behests. Ah. And I'm enjoined by Holy Lawrence to fall prostrate here. Beg your pardon. Uh, so why, I'm glad, Arm. Um, this is well. Stand up, stand up. Now, for God. Uh, <laughs> this reverend holy friar, all our whole city is much bound to him. Uh, <laughs> Obediencia non loquitur. Amen. face is much abused with tears. The tears have got small victory by that, for it was bad enough before their spite. Thou wrongst it more than tears with that report. That is no slander, sir, which is a truth. Father. Oh, Benedict, 
gone quickly. A man is dying. A man is dying and wishes to confess. Oh, my brother donkey. Hey, why? Oh, my letter. What is it, my good man? Five days he lies abed with a strange sickness. His body's racked with pain. I fear he dies. He wants a father confessor for his sins, but will not have a doctor for his aim. He fears death, but he fears the doctor more. Chance will the soul he may unburden to one who also knows of medicine. And be it so, for body ailments often mirrors a sickness of the soul. But this is plague. <gasps> I pray thee, leave me to myself tonight, for I have need of many orisons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which, well thou knowest, is cross and full of sin. What, do you busy home? Need you my help? No, madam. We have called such necessaries as are behoveful for our state tomorrow. So please you. Let me now be left alone, and let the nurse this night sit up with you. For I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Good night. Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. My dismal scene, I need must act alone.
What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? What if it be a poison which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead? Lest in this marriage he should be dishonored because he married me before to Romeo. How if, when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time the holy friar come to redeem me? Shall I not then be stifled in the vault to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in? Or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place? As in a vault, an ancient receptacle. Where for these many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed. Where bloody Tybalt yet but green in earth like festering in his shroud. Oh look, oh look, methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo. Stay, Tybalt, stay! Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee. If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly on his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead. Strange dreams that gives a dead man leave to think and breathed such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was an emperor. <laughs> ah, me, how sweet is love itself possessed, when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. Welcome, Dalton. 
news, comrade. Hanna Balthazar! Hanna Balthazar! Have a letter to me from the fire. How doth my lady? Is my father well? How doth my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. She is well, and nothing can be ill. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it for my office, sir. Ill news, thou sayest? Her body sleeps in Capul's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw all this, and presently took post to tell it you. I do beseech you, sir. Have patience. Your looks are pale and wild. And do import some misadventure. Tush, thou art deceived. Hast thou no letter for me from the trial? No, my good lord. No matter. Get thee gone. Then I defy you, stars. My lord! Funeral. Well, 
at the main church. Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. Oh, lamentable day. But one oh. poor one. One poor and loving child. But one thing to rejoice and solace him. And cruel death have cast him from my sight. Confusion's cure lives not in these confusions. Heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all, and all the better is it for the maid. Sir, go you in, and madam, go with him. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill. Move them no more by crossing their high will.
Only Franciscan friar. Brother, ho! Welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo? I could not find him. The searchers of the town, suspecting that I was in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors and would not let me forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Who bore my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again, nor get a messenger to bring it thee. So fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune. By my brotherhood, the letter was not nice, but full of charge of dear import and the neglecting it may do much danger. Friar John, go hence. Get me an iron crow and bring it straight unto my cell. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. I must indeed. And therefore came I hither. Good, gentle youth. Tempt not a desperate man. I beseech thee, youth. Put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. Oh, be gone. Stay not. Be gone. Live. And hereafter say, a madman's mercy bade thee run away. I do defy thy conjurations and apprehend thee for a felon here. <laughs> ah! Oh. If thou be merciful, open the tomb. Lay me with Juliet. Oh. In faith, I will. What said my man? And my betossed soul did not attend him. I think he told me Paris should have married Juliet. Said he not so? Or did I dream it so? Or am I mad? Hearing him talk of Juliet, to think it was so. Oh. Give me thy hand. One writ with me in sour misfortune's book. I'll bury thee in a triumphant grave. Keepers call a lightning before death. Oh, how may I call this a lightning?
Oh, my loved one. My wife. Death that had sucked the honey of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conqueror. Beauty's ensign yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. Tybalt, lies thou there in thy bloody sheet? Oh, what more favor can I do to thee than for that hand that cut thy youth in twain to sunder his that was thine enemy. Forgive me, cousin. Ah, oh, dear Juliet, why are they yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous, and that the lean of horrid monster keeps the hair in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain, and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world weary. Eyes look your last arms take your last embrace and lips oh you the doors of breath seal with a righteous kiss a dateless bargain to engrossing Come, bitter conduct. Come, unsavory guide. Thou desperate pilot. Now at once run on the dashing rocks. Thy ceasing weary. Romeo! 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 Romeo. How pale. How oh. oh, come. 
comfortable friar. Where is my lord? Oh. I do remember well where I should be. And there I am. Where is my Romeo? Lady, come from this nest of death, contagion and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intent. Come, come away. Come, go, good Juliet. I dare no longer stay. This is thy sheath. There run. And let me die. as a bell that warns my old age to a sepulchre. <laughs> oh, thou untold, what manners is in this to press before thy father to a grave? <laughs> Capulet, Montague, See what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love.
gloaming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Who's 